Hello, you find me in kind of unfamiliar Mazda territory here. This is a Mazda 626. Mazda 626. This Mazda 626 is actually quite, quite tidy. Um, it has a problem down here. That brake won't unbreak. I mean, it's not fully seized, but it's kind of semi seized. In fact, if I try and push it now, I'll struggle. So, what I need to do is figure out what's going on. And you might think, well, that's, surely that's not that difficult. Well, no, it's not. Only it's been through a garage already and they fitted a new caliper to it. So it's not just a seized caliper by the sound of it. Uh, other garage couldn't figure out what it was. Now it's ended up here. Let's see if I can figure out what it is. Uh, this one's on the clock, it's a customer's car. So I get the stopwatch out. I press go and now I'm being paid, so I, I go. Right, so with it jacked up. Oh wow, yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah, that's uh that's tight. Let's just check what the other sides are like. Free spinning. Nothing wrong with the other side, so that straight away should rule out well it does rule out the master cylinder because unless the master cylinder is plumbed in some really odd way these are wheel trims that you can access the wheel nuts through well it does indeed look like a kind of new caliper so I'm not entirely sure what the problem could be here. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll, re I'll release the pressure on the bleed nipple because if it's a hydraulic problem where it's not allowing the brake to release, fluid will spray out of there. And then as soon as it does, I'll be able to turn the wheel or the hub because at the moment I can't. So, all right, so I've got my jam jar. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll hold it, release this. Mm. which means it's not a hydraulic problem which means it's they've put a new caliper on it but it must be caliper related one of the other issues i was wondering is whether the uh, brake hose is broken up inside because sometimes the rubber can fail and it kind of deteriorates inside and when you push the pedal down the fluid goes through a deteriorated piece of rubber but when you lift off your foot and the fluid tries to come back through a piece of rubber that might be a, a bit of a flap pulls back and blocks it so you end up with a brake hose that ends up act acting as a kind of ratchet uh, i wondered if it was something like that but no 13 mil i thought that might be a 13 mil bolt but it's not because japanese that is absolutely solid so what's, what's the dealio? Oh, now it rotates. It's been through another garage. Well, it's been through a service center uh, of a well-known parts and accessories store beginning with H. So, yeah, that might not mean anything, but another new fixing. Oh, so that's the handbrake disconnected. And that's the caliper. See, it's got these little, it's got these little nuggets on the back here and the caliper is a type that winds because it's got a handbrake mechanism built into it so those are supposed to locate onto here and then this outer part of the caliper sits still but it's not so what i really need to do now i would say is put something in here 
to stop the caliper, the piston from flying out when I apply the brakes. But I'm going to try applying the brakes, having the piston come out, and then sort of prove that I can wind it back in again. Just to make sure it's not, I mean, it's, it shouldn't be seized if it's a new one, but you've got to eliminate the simple things first, haven't you? If you don't, you end up chasing your tail. Right, I'm going to go and push the brake pedal, so the piston should come out and make this all go tight. That's what it should do. Right. Pedal's gone firm. My spanner is now wedged in there. Right, so the piston has come out. Now what I can't do is just push it straight back in, like normally with front calipers, if they haven't got a handbrake mech on them, you can use G-clamps or something and just squeeze it back in. But you can't do that on these because there's a handbrake mechanism and these are sitting on a, a threaded, well, stud, I suppose. And what I don't know is whether it's left or right hand thread. Luckily I have I have both what's it, so I'll try right hand first. There you go, I said I wanted to do more jap car stuff, didn't I? I meant my own, but not right, so that is not seized. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It is successfully winding back in. Not a problem. Absolutely no problem at all, there's nothing wrong with that. And now you can see, so that the handbrake things aren't lined up. And if I haven't got this collar on it, it's not on the thread anymore, I'm just rotating it. You can turn it, like that, in the caliper housing. It's just that it won't push it in or out if you rotate it. You have to, you have to, oh, it's not right. You have to rotate it and push it at the same time. It's damaged there, look, where it's, uh, not been sitting right. So what else could it? What's make it like? These discs don't look old either. I mean, it might just be worth sticking it back together and seeing what happens. Problem is, I need it to actually fail on me. It's done. It, it's done exactly what it's meant to there. So yeah, to put it back together and pump it up again. See what happens. Just putting these on to keep the disc tight on the hub. Lovely. So handbrake's not connected. Let's take that out of the equation. If I go and pump the brakes again, it should take up the slack, but not seize up. There you go, I can feel it's bitten. Okay, hang on. The brake lights work even without the key in. How strange is that? That's exactly as it's meant to be. Uh, right, so what I really have to go and do is pump the brakes up a lot and sort of simulate sustained use. Otherwise I'm gonna have to start drive it home tonight or something. Right, let's go and pump them up a bit more. Right, I've just gone and put the kettle on. I've clocked off. And while I've done that, I've just started the engine up, I've pumped the brakes a few times, and now she gone solid. So I'm just gonna try this. I'm not even gonna put the pipe on this. We'll just get a little of fluid if my suspicions about the hose or the master cylinder or the pump, well, it won't be the master cylinder because the the other side's not doing it, unless it's got single, like the, it's got its own circuit for uh, each brake at the back from the master cylinder, which is unlikely. It might have it from the ABS pump, but it won't have it from the master cylinder. Uh, well, very unlikely to. I could just get off my ass and go and have a look, but I, I'm gonna stick with my principles. Uh, yeah, if I undo this and a load of fluid goes and I can turn it again, which I don't think will happen, that would suggest it's a hydraulic problem, but I think the issue 
is the interface between the pads and the caliper. So let's try it. Nothing at all. Exactly what it's meant to do. So that suggests the problem is between the pads and the caliper. It has to be. It looks, I'm wondering if that, I mean, I've not even connected the handbrake back up, but I'm wondering if the caliper is faulty or if the, um, are the pads the right pads? Maybe they're meant to have two little nuggets on there. Mm, kettle's boiled. Right, so I've gone off, uh, had my cup of tea, and I've done some research, and there is a chassis number crossover, um, not too far out from this car, uh, from the, you know, the, the, the VIN of this car, so there is a chance that, that those pads don't go with that caliper, but we'll have to see. I think what I'll have to do, I'm gonna take it apart again, just confirm the same thing happened again. Uh, I have messaged the owner to ask him if he has any um, paperwork to say, you know, part numbers and things like that. Oh no, that's interesting. Hmm, that's interesting. It hadn't moved. Although these pads, I mean, that one's got hot, so this needs changing anyway. Paint's all burnt on the back of it, but that one has got a part number, so I'll check that. Now the um, it hasn't rotated. Could it be the hose? It's a tough call. Just trying to think of a way that the hose could cause that. No. No, if it was the hose, fluid would leak back out of the bleed nipple when I opened it. It would. There'll be, because there has to be pressure. If there's hydraulic pressure keeping a caliper in place, uh, you know, a piston in place, that pressure has to go if you open the bleed nipple. The only way that would work is if the bleed nipple was blocked, which isn't, because fluid did come out. It's just at the right amount. Um, yeah. So there's a part number on that. Let's see if I can read it. Ooh, so... So what's going on here then? Because what I was expecting to find was that the piston would have come out and rotated and got stuck and bound up like it had last time, but it hasn't rotated. Where's the wind back tool gone? Just make sure it's still... This is a bizarre one. Well, it's kind of good when you have these jobs where they make you uh, make you think. So it's just wind straight back in, no problem at all. It's got to be something. I know because see, this is the interesting thing. The customer had noted that the lug on the back of the pad wasn't lined up with the lug in the piston. He had mentioned that. Now I don't know if he'd mentioned that because he saw it or because. It was like that, he rectified it, and it's ended up like that again. I need to find out. I need to get the exact sequence of events, because otherwise we're going to end up chasing our tails here. This caliper, he has wound the piston back in himself before. So we, it winds in and out fine. Why would it wind in and out fine, but lock? It's got to be an alignment thing or something. It's, this is really weird. <laughs> I don't know. Nope. Something silly like the, there's supposed to be a washer behind this carrier and it's not in line properly. Let's try. Oh, nope, that's not the light. That's the light. Yeah, so it's biting on the back properly. Can I see a part number on this pad? Not really. 2021 they were made. Yeah, I need to find out exactly. Yeah, they don't. Well, they're worn wonky for a start. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but they're they're not worn flat. No, 
that has been burnt properly that has got really hot that one right it needs new pads regardless so i'll probably just order some of them but i need to know things like when they put the new caliper in did they change the pads because if the pad is worn to a funny shape you can see that's the one that was fitted on the outside had this contact patch on the disc that's that's not shiny and that's that bit there you can feel there's a chamfer in it so one of the pads has been sat wonky so it's I mean you do get that because sometimes the sliders can be a bit a bit worn but this is a new to so the bushes for this the bushes are in the new caliper the sliders so it shouldn't really that is a really weird conundrum you could say i mean i've looked the price of calipers are not that crazy they're not that expensive uh, i know you know some japanese cars you think all oh, this is going to be you know really expensive parts but they're not i mean they're you know i think they're like well from what i could see quickly they're about 60 quid something like that just for the caliper not for the carrier as well um yeah god i know how to pick them don't i i had an idea to just go around the other side and have a look at the brakes on this side um the caliper on this side is much newer even newer uh, the pads have not been baked they appear to be the same part number so i might be able to get the part numbers off of these I'll, I'll inspect it as best I can, but I don't really think it's going to make much difference. But the only thing I have noticed is this this little sprung, well, anti-rattle spring, which... Because yeah, those pads, I'll just check those pads are worn evenly. They are worn evenly. The, the, the anti-rattle spring, when the pads are sat in the carrier, pushes into little holes like this. Now, on this side, it was at the bottom. On the other side, it was at the top. And I'm thinking, that surely doesn't make the difference, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a whirl, because you never know. Could be something stupid like that. You would ask why do the pads have the holes in both ends then? Maybe, you know, one is probably supposed to go at the top, but then they've got the holes in both ends because it's the same part twice cheaper manufacturing oh it's worth a go isn't it in the absence of anything else at the moment you've got to eliminate these things when you when you're facing the unknown you've got to try these things right so let's try pumping the brakes again and there we go that's still moving I started the engine last time and then pumped the brakes to give me some servo pressure. I'm going to try that again, but I'm not going to pump the brakes first. I'm going to start the engine and wait and then check it. Just in case it was something to do with the ABS pump. Now I'll try the brakes. Tough. Hmm. Still not right, but the pads are worn unevenly. I'll try the pads from the other side in this side. Right. 
put this in the other side, then go and start the engine, then go and pump the brakes, then see if this one seized again. I think it will. I don't think the pads are going to be the issue, but we need to eliminate it. Engine start. Locked up. Right, so it's not the pads. It's got to be the caliper. Has to be the caliper. Can't be anything hydraulic related because that is locked solid at the moment. There's the bleed nipple. If it was master cylinder, ABS, even this hose. If there was a block in this hose somewhere and it was allowing fluid through but not back out again, that means that somewhere there has to be pressure there has to be pressure on the piston, and there isn't. It's just dribbling out like it should do. And you still can't move it till it's not backing off. It has to be the caliper, but to confuse things more, apparently this car's had a new caliper, but has he got muddled up? Because the other side is a new caliper, this one isn't. So is this caliper faulty? I'm going to put a pin in this and come back when I know more. 72 hours later. Right, uh, it's a couple of days later, uh, three possibly. Um, the Mazda is here, nothing's happened to it. Uh, I got to the end of the video the other day and kind of went... Some time has passed, I've come to a few decisions, I've learned a little bit more, and I've got a plan of action. So, I think that caliper's faulty. I don't know this for sure, um, but I, you know, basically running out of things to look at at the moment. Now, I spoke to the owner. The caliper on the other side was replaced recently by the um, fast fit sensor beginning with H, which you can buy bike racks and roof boxes from. I don't know why that one was changed. I think because it was binding. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I can't, it's, it's, the information's a little scrambled, but I think that that one was binding or there was something faulty with it. And then they said there was a problem with this side, but then it got MOT'd. I don't quite know what happened, but that side has been changed recently. As we can see, it was in much shinier than this one. This one was changed along with that one originally, the original, the OG uh, for that one over there a couple of years ago, 2021. They were both changed as a pair and then that one's been renewed since, recently. I'm wondering if they're faulty. Um, they came from eBay. They weren't cheap, actually, from what I can see, but I think there could be a fault. So what I've done is I've bought another caliper because my labor rate is 83 pound an hour, which some people will think, oh, that's strong. And other people will think, oh, that's quite cheap. It depends who you are and what you expect. Uh, but basically, with a labor rate of 83 pound an hour, that caliper is not 83 pounds, it's less than that. I found this cheaper than he paid for the other ones. And it's a decent one, so I'm gonna stick this on because I could take that off and I could take it apart and strip the piston out and everything, but I don't know if it's wrong or not. I don't know if it's been put together wrong because I don't know what it's meant to look like inside. Because I haven't taken a Mazda 626 caliper apart before, funnily enough, and there's no instructions or anything. So the cheapest thing to do, I know people say like firing parts cannons is you know, a mug's game. The cheapest thing to do is to, is to stick a caliper on it and see if that sorts it. The caliper on the other side, the body is much more similar to this. That one looks completely different. So I'm wondering if there was a fault with the other side. You know, I started this off going, is this going to be some weird problem that, we, you know, a real head scratcher. It's normally a sequence of events that causes a head scratcher problem like this. They couldn't figure out what the problem was. I think it's this, so I'm going to fit this. I've also bought a new set of pads to replace the iffy ones. Um, so yeah, basically pull this off, stick this on, new pads and everything, bleed it up, and then just start the engine and pump the brake pedal a lot and see if it locks up again. That's it. Right, apologies for that. The microphone was not on. I thought it was, and it wasn't. Am I going to record it again? No! Right, so the handbrake is already disconnected. That is, that's tight. Oh, and the brake hose, that's amazing. The brake hose is a banjo fitting. Excellent. 
Uh, I guess it's going to be 14 mil because it's Japan. Oh no, is it 12? Surely not. It is, it's 12 mil. Just crimp the hose there so not much comes out. Right, so I've now done the other side as well, put the new pads in. I've bled it in as well. Uh, yeah, don't forget that, bled it in. So, yeah, just see if it works, I suppose. So I'm just pumping the pedal up. I think I've got a little bit of air in here still. Mm, seeming good so far. Well, I've got the brakes wedged down at the moment. Ooh. Well, they're doing something. They seem to be working. They're still down. What I'm going to do while they're down, because I'm on my own, and my pressure bleeder doesn't fit the reservoir at the front. So I'm having to use the vacuum bleeder, which is not ideal. I've got some pressure on the pedals. So I'm just going to... Oh yeah. yeah, quite a lot of air that time. Might just go and do that again, actually. Oh, nothing that time. Yeah, it was just pure fluid that time, so fire it up again. See if the pedal improved. It was a little bit spongy. Oh yeah, I think that's where it was. It was hard to tell. Well, it's not binding, which is good. Well, I think that seems to have got it. What I'm gonna do is pop that on there. No, I'm not, that's not the same. Where's the cover for the... Oh, donkey. Yeah, what I'm going to do, I think, is uh, pop it back together, reconnect the handbrake and everything, and then take it home. Uh, I'll run it home tonight, because that'll give it a test run. And um, see if it's, uh, yeah, mucking about, basically. Um, I think we're all right, but I'll find out whether it's binding or not on the journey home, so... Uh, if you don't hear back after this video, if this video ends here, it was successful. And it was a dodgy caliper that wasn't actually that old. And it's possible that the other side was the same. And a fast fit centre beginning with H couldn't find it. Hmm. Right, bye. Unless, unless I see you again, because it seized on the way home.